um, let me introduce you to Jean-Guy, who is going to be our model for this demonstration. Uh, we're going to apply a Freestyle Libre sensor on him um, so that we can monitor his uh, glucose levels continuously. So I'm going to show you the gear. Right, so this is the box the sensor comes in. Uh, it comes in two parts. Uh, the sensor is actually in here and then you take it out that's already been done. So this is the part that you use to apply the sensor. Um, you can't see but there's a little uh, needle that goes under the skin while you apply but then you remove the part that's used to apply the sensor and there's only a tiny catheter that stays in um, after application. Um, this is uh, super glue because we're putting it on a cat and so the provided glue for the sensor is not, not quite enough and little pre-injection swabs to uh, make sure that we remove all oil off his skin and this is the reader. It also uh, dubs as a, a glucose meter. You can buy strips um, and you can also use your smartphone to scan the sensor if you have a modern smartphone. Right, so um, I'm going to go to where things are happening. So getting everything ready. Um, put a little bit of glue, so a few few dabs or a little little circle. You want to put you don't want to put too much glue, otherwise it oozes out, and you don't want to put not enough glue because otherwise the sensor falls off. So this is a bit of a question of experimenting and finding the right amount. Um, we've shaved the spot with a well you can either you can get a fancy pet sensor. Um Je vais pas taper encore. Non? Shit. T'es sûr? Ah, je Mais non, c'est le capteur ça. Mais non, il n'y a pas d'aiguille. Je l'ai ah, pas taper. merde. Alors, tu peux arrêter de filmer? Right, so there you can, you can, now you can see the needle. Actually, we forgot to put the to put the two pieces together to pick up the needle. Oh, there it is. Alors, donc, si le truc là et le truc là, on appuie, on retire, et on met la colle. So, uh, there's a little moment of panic here, but that we, we dealt with offline. But there we are, we're ready. There's glue on the sensor. We've shaved the spot between the cat's shoulder blades where we're going to... Um, where we're going to apply the sensor. Uh, you can shave it with a fancy, you know, pet... Um, what do you call it? A, a thing that shaves. Or you can buy a... You can use a, a bikini one. Uh, that you can buy for a few dollars. Yeah, c'est bon. Okay. So, now we're removing all oil from the skin. Jean is a really nice cat. Je te laisse. Yeah. And so you apply the device and you just press lightly and it goes in. And so the needle goes in the skin, so that's a bit startling sometimes. Sometimes the cat reacts, sometimes it doesn't. And you keep it in place for 30 seconds so that the glue has time to glue. Okay. And so these sensors last up to 14 days. Uh, sometimes they last less than 14 days. Uh, so you have to be aware, yeah, just use a, uh, this is so that we're sure the sensor doesn't come off 
and the there we go it's in place so sometimes they don't last the full 14 days so you have to be aware that um, um, yeah so we're going to scan a new a new sensor there and in one hour we'll get our first reading and then the sensor takes a reading every 15 minutes automatically it stores up to eight hours of measurements so if you scan every eight hours, you have a complete 24-7 um, uh, record of uh, the blood glucose. Well, not the blood glucose, it's interstitial, but anyway, roughly the same thing. Thank you, Jean-Guy! <laughs>
last but not least, as you're getting 24-7 monitoring, really 24-7 monitoring, uh, you can actually be more aggressive uh, in uh, adjusting the insulin because you know that you're not going to miss anything. And uh, so, so, so that, it, for me, is interesting too because it means that you can afford to take risks that you might not take if you're testing by hand because uh, there will be gaps in the measurements. Uh, there, there is a time where you need to sleep. And so uh, you can get a, a good regulation faster uh, with this method. Now, downsides, because there are some, the first one is that it's not cheap. So depending where you live, it can be quite a price tag. Um, applying the Freestyle Libre uh, uh, for the first time, at least you're going to have to go to the vet. So that's going to cost you something. You're going to need to find a vet to uh, show you how to do it, if they agree to do it, uh, or figure it out yourself. Uh, don't, don't do the first application yourself without any medical supervision, okay? Uh, it's still still tricky to find the, the right place and and uh, you don't want to, to be messing this up. Uh, but uh, once you've been shown how to do it and you've got enough practice, you can apply it yourself, but you usually need a second person uh, to help you with it. Uh, the good thing, is, the good side is normally it's every two weeks, okay? So it's only once in every two weeks that you need to to put yourself through it. And some people with very compliant cats can actually do it sing uh, alone, alone. so no, not necessarily with help. Um, then um, these devices are supposed to switch off after 14 days, so they're programmed to do that. Uh, and uh, sometimes they stop working before. So they're not 100% reliable when it comes to working for the full 14 days. And as use on animals is not uh, approved, then uh, it means you won't get a replacement. So you have to, to be aware that uh, not only are they uh, not that cheap, uh, but uh, you might put one on, it'll stop working 24 hours lately, later. Uh, overall, they work more often than not, at least on, the, uh, on what I've seen amongst the now quite a handful of cats I've been following who, who, who use the Freestyle Libre, uh, but always have a spare one uh, and be ready to have to change it if it stops working. And finally, and this is something that I've seen on forums and Facebook groups quite a lot, the Freestyle Libre measures interstitial glucose versus blood glucose. Now, uh, so that means for those who are following protocols like the Rump and Ran protocol, uh, uh, 2009 one, uh, it has uh, it has safety. Um, uh, what do you call them? Uh, anyway, they're safety numbers, right? So uh, below 40, uh, you're going to try to make sure the cat doesn't go any lower. You're going to reduce the dose for the ne for, from the next injection onwards, etc. And so these uh, safety numbers have been determined with a blood glucose meter. Now, there's a catch, which is that uh, during the original study, they were actually using whole blood glucose meters, and those that we use now are generally plasma equivalent blood meters. So you could argue that we're already not, uh, you know, uh, we're already straying from uh, what was the initial design of the study and the protocol. And so here we've got interstitial blood glucose, uh, not, not blood, sorry, interstitial glucose measurements, uh, which are supposed to be equivalent for a human being because that's how these devices are calibrated to uh, what you'd measure with a blood prick. Um, but uh, we're not sure, right? They're cats. So uh, for those of you who are concerned about this, like is the Freestyle Libre going to give me sufficient warning that my cat is going down in, in low uh, glucose values and might be at risk for a hypo? Uh, what I'd recommend is get yourself an alpha track meter, so uh, uh, an animal calibrated meter. And when the cat is in the low values on the Freestyle Libre, do a near measure with the alpha track and compare. So I did this. Uh, I got two measures when Oscar was down in the four, so under forty, on the um, on the freestyle leap because it doesn't go lower. Um, and once uh, the measure was uh, sixty on the alpha track, and uh, the other time it was uh, sixty five. Bearing in mind that on an animal calibrated glucose meter. 
down to 40, you know, chances of having a great disaster are rather slim. So there's still a lot of, of wiggle room in there. And so I've been um, letting Oscar uh, go down in, in low values uh, quite comfortably, of course, keeping an eye on him. He's never showed any signs of being unwell. Uh, I did a few measures with the alpha track to make sure that I wasn't doing anything reckless. And there you go. Uh, the other catch with interstitial glucose is that it's five to 10 minutes behind blood glucose. So if you measure 50 now, it's actually, it was 55 or 10 minutes ago. Uh, that's usually not a huge issue if you're using Lantus or Levomir because the drops are not that, uh, that fast. So there, um, a little summary of uh, what I've learned in these last few months of using the Freestyle Libre. Uh, I really encourage you to try it if you can get your vet on board. There are quite a few uh, demonstration videos done by vets uh, on YouTube that you can find. And uh, it's, it's really, uh, for me, way more comfortable, uh, safer, and more efficient uh, than, than uh, the, the normal home testing, which is already great compared to the usual shoot blind uh, approach that we find all over the world. Okay, thanks for watching the video. Feel free to share it. Um, if you are an English speaker with a diabetic cat, please head over to felinediabetes.com and join the Feline Diabetes message board. If you're a French speaker or know French speakers who have diabetic cats, you can go to diabet-felin.com and join the French Facebook support group. Okay, bye-bye, take care.